بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد The keys to the treasures for both the world does not depend on does not rely on the apparent systems but on the unseen systems A person outwardly based on the influence that he grew up on will say a wealthy person a person who has a lot of businesses, a lot of wealth, a lot of assets, a lot of resources, that's a rich person. But if you look at the light of Quran and Hadith, that is not real wealth. A rich person is a person who is content. So more scarce than rands, dollars, pounds is a scarcity of contentment. Real wealth is yaqeen. ما نزل في الأرض شيء أقل من اليقين. Nothing has been more scarce than the commodity of yakin, and nothing more demanded, more needed, less frequented. A commodity that is very scarce on earth is yakin. ولا قسم بين الناس شيء أقل من الحلم. And nothing has been distributed amongst people more scarce than perseverance. So more scarce than gold, diamonds, platinum, palladium, roj, and any commodity on earth is the commodity of yaqeen. So a true treasure, a true uh, asset is the asset of yaqeen. That person is rich. Hidayat is a very scarce commodity. That's why in every rakat of salah, we are asking Allah, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. It is a dua. The summary of deen is hidayat. More scarce than any stock market, stock shares, whether it's Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, is the stock of hidayat, the commodity of hidayat. We can have all the treasures on earth, but we don't have hidayat, then a person is a pauper. Ilm of deen, knowledge is a treasure, better than any real estate on earth, any waterfront property, any island. Nothing can be compared to the ilm of deen, the knowledge of deen. You can have everything, you don't have the knowledge of deen, you have nothing. So we have to understand that one is the apparent system, the outward systems, the visible systems, and one is the unseen system, the hidden system, active and passive. So that's yaqeen, and daily we see examples. There was a human resource manager who interviewed a person. He went for a job for cleaning the floors, an office boy, cleaning the lavatories, a janitor. So he passed the test. And uh, the HR manager said, you are hired, give me your email address, I'll send you an application and send you the acceptance form and when you should report for work. So the man said, I don't have a computer, forget an email. I don't have a computer, forget an email. So then HR said, if you don't even have an email means that you do not exist and we cannot hire somebody that does not exist. So the man was disappointed, he did not know what to do, he had ten dollars on him, so he said if I'm spending it, it's finished, it's gone, he went to the supermarket, he bought some tomatoes, he went door, door to door to sell it, in two hours time he sold it, went back, bought more, repeated the process, returned home with sixty dollars, he said hey this is a way to start. Then he started working early, finishing late, double, triple the money, bought a cart, then a truck in a short time. He had his own fleet of delivery vehicles. And a few years later, he was one of the biggest food retailers in the country. So he had a lot of wealth. Now he needed a portfolio manager, a, a financial advisor, a broker to tell him where he should invest his funds. So the person came, he did the interview, he completed, he said, okay, I will uh, onboard you, this is a process, send me your email address. So the man said, I don't have an email. So the broker was dumbfounded. 
He said, you don't even have an email and yet have succeeded in building such a big empire. Can you imagine what you would have been if you had an email? What would you have become if you had an email? The man thought for a while and then he said, a janitor, a floor boy. So if we look at it also, many a time, even the outward means, Allah, Allah has given certain people wealth, it is not by their doing, their intellect, their wisdom, their skill, their style. It's Allah's favor on them. Sometimes we think so, Utitu ala ilmin indi. I know it all. I got the skill. I got the acumen. Doesn't work like that. So such unseen barakah that we cannot imagine. Such barakah that it even contravenes logic. As Ali used to walk during winter with a very, very thin fabric, a, a, a loincloth and an upper garment. And in summer, sometimes you wear padded cloaks, thick clothing, like winter clothing. So somebody requested that it should be inquired to Hazrat Ali radiallahu an that uh, what's the wisdom and hikmah so they said, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, inna nasa qad tafaqadu minka shay'an. O oh, Amir al Mu'minin, people find something very strange about you. He said, What is that? He said, Takhruju fil hadri shadid fil qaba'il mahshuwi. That in the scorching heat you come out with padded clothing, thick clothing, and during the icy cold winters, you come out with very thin clothing. Is there any uh, significance? لا تبالي ذلك وما كنت معنا يا أبا ليلى بخيبر. So yes, Abu oh, Abu Layla, have you not been uh, with us in 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 Khaybar? Do you know what happened there? Then Nazar Ali explained that Nabi Alayhi Salaam sent Abu Bakr to lead the army. He was unable to conquer the fortress. Then Umar knew he was unable to conquer. Then Nabi Alayhi Salaatu Salaam said, لَأُطِيَنَّ الرَّايَةَ رَجُلًا يُحِبُّ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ I will give this flag to somebody who loves Allah and his Rasul. So this now was handed to Hazrat Ali radiallahu anh. and when he arrived he said I was suffering from so much pain la ubsiru shay'an and my eye had so much pain I could see nothing Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam applied his saliva to my eye and then made dua saying Allah makfihi al-har wa al-bard Allah suffice protect heat and cold for him فَمَا آذَانِي بَعْدَهُ حَرٌ وَلَا بَرْدٌ After that dua of my beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after that day heat or cold was equivalent. It was equal, it never affected me. Continue with the Azbab of Barakah, number 30, Salatu Duha. So after Fajr to sit in our place, cross-legged, wait till sun rise, 15 minutes later to read Salatul Ishraq and after that Salatul Duha, chast. A rewrite of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Awsani Khalili, my beloved friend advised me three things, till I die I shouldn't leave it, fast in the three days and second is Salatul Duha, to be particular about Salatul Duha, Ya bin Adam لا تعجزني من أربع ركعات في أول نهارك أكفك آخره. They don't ever be lax in the four rakats in the beginning of the day. I will suffice for you for the rest of the day. I will suffice for all your needs. شقيق بلخي رحمة الله عليه used to say تلبنا خمسا فوجدنا في خمس. We looked for five things and we found it in five. تلبنا نورا في القبر فوجدناه في قيام الليل. We were looking for light in the grave and we found it in Tahajjud. We sought satiation on the day of Qiyamah. We forged Nahafi Sawmin Nahar in fasting in the day. 
And we looked for crossing the pool Sirat فَوَجَدْنَاهُ فِي sadaqa Charity And we looked for protection from Munkar and Nakir in the Qabr فَوَجَدْنَاهَا فِي قِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ We found it in Tilawat of Qur'an And the last one why we mentioned this وَتَلَبْنَا الْبَرَكَةَ فَوَجَدْنَاهَا فِي صَلَاةِ الضُّحَى We were looking for baraka and blessings and we found it in Salatul Duha. Number 31, spending time in the company of the pious, the muttaqi, the scholars, the salihin, the ulama haq, the ulama rabbaniyin, the mashayikh. So we have to seek the friends of Allah, we have to seek the company of those people who will take us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because of the effort of these ulama in mashayikh, they is a means of drawing the help and the nusrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dispelling calamities. And the ulama explain, إِنَّمَا تُنْصَرُونَ وَتُرْزَقُونَ بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ That you get help of Allah and sustenance through the weak. One is physically weak, the elderly, the young, etc., the sickly. And another meaning ulama have explained is that those people who are sincere in their dua, khashi'una fi ibadatihim, sincere servants who humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their hearts are free from dunya and they are so humble they feel that they are the weakest servants on earth through these weak servants, means they are not physically weak but they are humbled in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your du'as get accepted through them, barakah descends. That's why some wise people you say, مَنْ جَعَلَ سَخَيْرًا أَصَابَتْهُ بَرَكَةٍ Whoever sits in the company of the people of good, they will get the blessings of that. And the company of the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one will be deprived. وَإِنْ كَانَ كَلْبًا كَكَلْبِ أَصْحَابِ الْكَافِ even if it's the dog of the Ashab Kaf, you will not be deprived. Mawlana Musa Palun Prahmullah's Jamaat went to one area and a person was an alcoholic and tashkil was made. And he said, You know what? I cannot uh, get away from my habit. Mawlana said, Just join the Jamaat. So he got ready to join the Jamaat. He said, But remember my weakness. So Mawlana said, Okay, on these conditions, yeah, these are the conditions. And if you have a, a, a withdrawal feeling then come to me and I will advise you. So part of the terms was that he would come only after the program at night if he needed to. So the first night he came he requested Maulana that you know what I, 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 I have a, a, a desire give me permission. So Maulana said okay but remember the terms. So he agreed. Then the next day at the time Maulana was waiting for him and he left it. Then he went later in the darkness of the night, he found this person crying in tears and he said, Ya Allah, you know my condition, you know where I was, I repent to you, Ya Allah, consider me the dog of the Ashab Kahf, I am the dog of this Jamaat, Ya Allah to the Barak of this Jamaat, Ya Allah make my maghfirah, give me tawfiq to repent and turn to, to you. So the company of the pious is essential, it is imperative. Ibn Khattab radiallahu an used to say, Alayka bi ikhwani siddiq That holds steadfast to good pious company, the truthful, the sadiqeen. Because there is a shield and a protection and preservation. فَإِنَّهُمْ Because they are such, they are the beautification. in moments of comfort and ease and they will support you fil bala at a time of difficulty and hardship. Ya Rasulullah, riwayat of Abdullah ibn Abbas who are the best company? Which companions are the best? Nabi alayhi salam told sahaba, man dhakkarakum Allah ru'yat that whoever when you see him, his vision, seeing this person reminds you of Allah. وَزَادَ fi ilmikum, And when you speak to this person, your knowledge increases. وَذَكَّرَكُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ And his actions will remind you of Akhirah. 
when you look at this person's actions, you are reminded of Akhirah. Is it Ali radiallahu anhu say, Al-alimu abdhalu min as-sa'imi al-qa'imi al-mujahid. A alim is more virtuous than a fasting person all day, a person making night, and tie a night in ibadah and a mujahid in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا مَاتَ الْعَالِمِ And when an alim passes away, there is a flaw, there is a deficiency in Islam which cannot be filled, we cannot compensate for the deficiency. Then you should say some ashar in poetry. مَا الْفَخْرُ إِلَّا لِأَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ إِنَّهُمْ أَلَى الْهُدَى لِمَنِ اسْتَهْدَى أَدِلَّاءُ وَقَدْرُ كُلِّ امْرِئِمْ مَا كَانَ يُحْسِنُهُ وَالْجَاهِلُونَ لِأَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ عَادَاءُ فَفُزْ بِعِلْمٍ تَعِشْ حَيًّا بِهِ أَبَدًا أَنَّاسُ مَوْتَى وَأَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ أَحْيَاءُ So you should explain that honor and reverence and, and, and if anybody needs to be proud should be the ulama because they are guided and they are means of guiding other people and a person's status is according to his level of ilm of deen and connecting to the ahli ilm so the more you spend time in the company the more the metamorphosis happen a person is looking for a service he has to go to the place where vehicles are serviced the service mechanics won't come to you you need to take it to their workshop because all the equipment is there we want our Islam, we need to go to the Masajid, the houses of Allah, the places of Islam, the Marakis, the, the, the Mashayikh, out in the path of Allah, Sahbat and company of the Ulama, spending time with these pious people. And the ignorant are enemies for the people of knowledge. Ignorance is an enemy for knowledge. So be successful when you spend time and engage with the people of Ilm Anas Mauta people are dead and the people of knowledge are alive Abul Aswad used to say that nothing is more honorable min al ilm than knowledge al muluk hukamun ala nas that the kings and the presidents control people وَالْعُلَمَاءُ حُكَّامٌ عَلَى الْمُلُوكِ But the ulama control the kings and you have seen history to testify to this. Umar رضي الله عنه say إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَخْرُجُ مِنْ مَنْزِلِهِ A person leaves his home and he has sins مِثْلَ جِبَالِ تِهَامَ Like the mountains of Tihama Great great mountains he says guna فَإِذَا سَمِعَ الْعَالِمُ When he sits in the company of a scholar, a Allah-fearing scholar, then he gets this fear and he makes tawbah and he repents. And he returns home with no guna. So don't ever separate. فَلَا تُفَارِقُوا مَجَالِسَ الْعُلَمَاء Make sure you don't ever be deprived of the company of the ulama in their gatherings. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ajib used to say, فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ لَمْ يَخْلُقْ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ تُرْبَةً أَكْرَمْ مِنْ مَجَالِسِ الْعُلَمَاء Ajib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not created on the earth soil that is nobler than the soil that is in the company of the ulama. Ibn Qayyim used to say, that sitting in the company of the friend of Allah, the Arif Billah, calls you from six to six. من الشك إلى اليقين From doubt to conviction. من الرياء إلى الإخلاص From ostentation to sincerity. من الغفلة إلى الذكر From negligence into remembrance. من الرغبة في الدنيا إلى الرغبة في الآخرة From uh, incline, thus inclining, the, from inclining to dunya, thus inclining one from dunya and making one inclined to akhirah and from proudness, haughtiness ila tawadu to humbleness wa min su'in niyati ila nasiha and from bad intentions to proper intentions 
and having good ambitions. Ibn Qayyim has mentioned some ajib point as well. He said, Al ulama'u hum fil ardi bi manzilatin nujum fi sama. Ulama like the stars in the heavens. People that are lost in the darkness, they look at the stars and they find direction. And he said, Wa hajatun nas ilayhim adamu min hajatim ila ta'amu sharab. People need ulama more than food and drink. A person came and uh, he was uh, by Ibn Zakwan and he spoke bad about an alim. He said, Mah, keep quiet, silence. Do not speak bad about the ulama. The consequence is your heart will die. Your heart will die. One great scholar of Islam from Najaf. One day he went into a store, he bought some vegetables which were very stale, the students seen it and then he said, I'll follow my Ustad and he trailed the Ustad and then he said, Ustad, but they were very nice vegetables, you bought the stale one. He said, had you not seen it, I wouldn't have told you. But uh, I didn't want to directly help the store owner, he's in need. I know nobody's gonna buy the stale fruits and vegetables. I bought the stale one so that I can support him. So to sit in the company of the ulama, there's a lot of things in life we need to learn. Number 32, olive. Min shajaratim mubaraka. We've discussed that in the survival guide. Likewise, number 33, at tamr. Fal yuftir ala tamrin fa innahu baraka. There's baraka in kajur dates. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. The amal for today is that to be contented with Allah has given us al kanatu kanzun la yafna. That contentment is a treasure that does not terminate, it does not finish, it does not become exhausted. Wa akhiru dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.